All right. On today's show, I welcome on a very special guest. We are going now. We're going to Boston. So this is our first Boston guest that we've ever had before. And I'm very excited to have him on the show. I welcome on Alex Mitchell. He's a senior guard for Buckingham Brown and Nichols boys basketball team. Alex, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Glad to be on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. It's it's cool to expand out a little bit. Boston's close to my heart because I uh, I, I lived there for a while in my life, and I really love the city. Um, how are you doing during COVID up there, and how's everything? You know, like how are you guys holding up during COVID up in Boston? Um, everything up in Boston, it's going well. Um, I think you know at the beginning about a year ago now, it was it was rough. It was kind of a shock to everyone. It was a shock to me. You know streets were quiet, you know, nobody was really out and about, everybody was kind of unsure. Um, but, you know, as we have passed, surpassed the year mark, I think everybody's, you know, starting to accept the new normal or what the new normal is going to look like. Um, you know, people are definitely, um, for the most part, you know, taking the necessary precautions, listening to, you know, healthcare specialists. So yeah, we're doing good. We're doing good up here. That's great. Yeah, I, I think we, and we talked about this a little bit off air too. I was like, last time I went up to Boston, it was just the weirdest like thing. The streets were kind of quiet. People were wearing masks. It was easy to park places, which is never the case, right? <laughs> right. No. Yeah. Um, but I, I, Alex, I want to, I want to start off. You know, before we talk about the season and what's it been like for you, I want to know how did you get into basketball? What made you fall in love with the game? I think I was first introduced to basketball because my grandfather, um, he really like loved the game. Um, he played at Tennessee State um, with uh, New York Knicks, uh, great Dick Barnett, actually. Um, and, you know, he was the one that really introduced the game to me. Um, you know, he would just sit when we would go visit. He's from the Bronx um, or he lived in the Bronx. Um, so when we would go visit, we would always I would always just he would always just be sitting in the same chair, you know, watching, you know, game on game on game just all day long. He was really just a sports person, but his his love was truly basketball. And I think, you know, I take it from him. And, you know, there's a lot of him in me in terms of the love of the game and, you know, how I see it and how I play it. So, yeah, that's that's amazing. I think that's such a cool um, aspect. And that's great that your grandfather introduced you to the game. Now, was your grandfather a Knicks fan or what, because of he played with? Or um, yeah, he definitely was a Knicks fan. Um, you know, he was born in Alabama, but he spent uh, most of his life, I'd say, um, in New York. So he was definitely a Knicks fan. And me being from Boston, my dad, who's not really a big basketball person, but just, you know, a, a Boston person because he grew up here and was born here. Um, we used to have as I got older and learned more about, you know, the teams and stuff, we used to have to have our conversations our arguments our clashes about you know new york versus uh boston in every sport really because you know the yankees red sox is a big one as well um so yeah we used to have our our arguments yeah are you now are you yankees or red sox who do you choose um i'm boston through and through in every sport i love it that's awesome that's great that's 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 amazing well i'll ask some of those questions down the line for sure because um, those are uh, very, very good questions, and we'll see what's up with Boston. I wanted to hear your thoughts on the Celtics later. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I mean, so your grandfather developed your love of basketball, and like, really, when did you kind of know that this is what you want? Like, you want to play this sport, and kind of really, you start to realize you're maybe start separating yourself a little bit from competition, and um, were able to go to the BBN. Um, I think. I really, I've always had love for the game. So at an early age, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. However, you know, my, I didn't really start putting in the time until late in my, I I'd consider myself a late bloomer, late in my career. Um, you know, when I got to high school, my freshman year, I didn't always go to BBNN. Yeah. Um, you know, most of my schooling career, I went to Brookline. Um, I went through the public school system. I started in kindergarten um and kind of worked my way up and then left in 10th grade um my ninth grade year when I got into BBN I I mean my ninth grade year when I was transitioning um to the high school you know my whole time at Brookline I've really been a middle of the pack middle of the pack type of player um you know I always played travel you know when AAU started getting hot I always played AAU but I was never you know one of the best in a pro the best in a program or the best on the travel team um, I didn't even make the A team or anything like that. 
in my ninth grade year, I was kind of coasting. Um, and it, it was a wake up call because my ninth grade year, I didn't even, I didn't make the freshman team. So that's when I was like, Oh, like if I really want to do this, I got to start putting in the time. Like I said, you know, I was kind of coasting. I'd always been a middle of the pack player, but you know, I came in thinking, you know, I I'm going to make this team. Like there's not that many kids better than me. Um, and I didn't make the team and kind of, that, that was my wake up call. And that's when I started to, you know, take it seriously, you know, like work out a lot more, um, outside of practices, you know, start running, start, you know, lifting, start putting in the time early mornings, late nights, stuff like that. So I'd say my ninth grade year is when I started to, you know, really, when I really started to grind, um, in terms of basketball in general. And starting to separate myself because I knew I really wanted to do it by then I knew that like this is what I wanted to do but I wasn't I didn't put it in the time and I didn't really realize it until you know that ninth grade wake up call so yeah yeah that, I mean that's that's great for you too because I mean it's funny how something like stinks to get cut but like it's it's funny how like that kind of changes your mentality and changes your work ethic and like um you know, how you want to get into basketball and like make you make you a stronger player. Now, what was like some of the things, did you do things on your own? Did you work with someone or did you watch videos? Like how did, like, how did you just decide to like, you know, I'm going to take this to the next level, but like, did you have anyone guiding you or you just did it yourself? No. Yeah. I had um, a long time mentor of mine that kind of taught me the fundamentals of the game when I first started. Um, he's an old coach by the name of Jimmy Myers and he's still a great friend of mine, family friend, you know, I talked to him often um, and we used to work out pre COVID. Of course um, we used to work out every weekend. Um, and he really helped me after that because he is someone that has always seen the um, like my abilities, even beyond what I saw um, from a very young age. And so, you know, after I got cut, it was, it was obviously tough. Cause like I came in thinking I was going to make the team. So when I didn't, I was like, Oh, like, what do I do now? But, you know, he was one of the first people I talked to and he was just like, he's, he kind of instilled the mentality in me, the, the kind of, you know, you just got to work, keep working, keep working, keep working. And soon enough, you'll get your chance. You just got to take advantage of your opportunity. So, um, so yeah, we just started working out, you know, that freshman winter, you know, while everybody else was playing in their season, I was just working out, you know, Saturday mornings, you know, and any other time that I could work out with him. Um, we would just get in the gym, ball handling, jump shots. Um, and really just that kind of changed my trajectory in terms of, you know, someone who didn't make the freshman team to, you know, someone who's going to play at the next level. So, yeah. That's, that's crazy. It's, that's just amazing. It's amazing that it's great that you had that mentor and someone to work with you every like week. And that's just hard work and dedication and to put into it. Um, now, how did you, what's your decision to go to a BBNN um, school and like, what is also like too as well to play it on uh, play, play in the I, ISL and the NEPSAC leagues as well too, and playing against those competition. No. Yeah. Um, to start off my decision to go to BBNN kind of started with um, what happened in ninth grade, you know, I thought, I still think back on it, although I nowhere near, I was nowhere near the player I am today. I still thought that, you know, I wasn't given a fair shot. I think to this day, I still think I should have made that team. Um, however, it kind of started then with like the opportunity to, you know, increase my education. Cause my mom has always been on me about balance. If you don't have academics, then you're just not going to play. It's always been that way in the household um, and I have a younger brother who, you know, she's just beaten that concept into us that if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna um, work hard in the classroom, then like, I don't care how good you are on the court, you're just, you're not gonna play. I'll tell the coach to sit you. So um, it started to be, um, it started off based off that. Um, and it was introduced actually by Jimmy Myers, my mentor. Um, however, it, my ninth grade year, you know, the jump from middle school to high school academically um, was challenging for me, you know, in middle school, I never really had to like, you know, meet with teachers or do that, those extra little things um, to get the grades that I wanted, you know, in, in middle school, I was, you know, a high B um, student, and then coming into the high school, I was kind of just expecting the same. And it didn't really pan out that way. Um, you know, so I struggled my freshman year. 
And I had a couple of friends who had made the transition. Um, and I knew a couple of people at BBNN specifically. Um, and they told me about, you know, the class size being smaller and how it might help me. Um, and I didn't leave until after my sophomore year at, um, at BHS, Brookline High School. But, you know, I started thinking about it and it was, the idea was originally introduced to me after, um, you know, that spring ish of my freshman year. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. And it's awesome now, like, because I believe it's on your Twitter as well, too. But your GPA is what, a three, four, three, five? Yeah, three, four, three, five in there. So, yeah, that's awesome. That's great. That's great for you. I mean, that's that's like, you know, it's it sounds like you grew up a lot from your you going from middle school to your freshman year, kind of expecting things. And then you just grew up after your freshman year, which says a lot about your character and who you are and realizations of everything. And that's that's amazing to hear that. No, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Of course, of course. And now what's it like just playing, you know, playing in that independent school league and playing against Napscott, playing against those guys, um, the competition there and those like varsity teams for those. No, yeah, um, that's, <laughs> that's, I mean, that's another reason why I left, you know, not only an opportunity um, to play at the next level, but, um, you know, an opportunity to play increased competition, not that, you know, middle, public school um, competition is not good because there's definitely a lot of good guys um, that go on to the next level from, you know, the MIAA, which is our public school, high school league up here. Um, but, you know, the ISL is just a different world. And, you know, a lot of people, I don't think you understand it. You truly understand it until you you get there and you're like, oh, like, this is really like a jump up. And I didn't even understand it. You know, I had a couple of friends um, that were on the team at BBNN um, who I asked about it and they were like, no, yeah, it's 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 nothing like really um, the public school league, you know, every every game you come out and, you know, it's it's six, nine, six, eight, you know, across the <laughs> front line. Um, and, you know, we were we specifically at BBNN were undersized um, a lot. So I was forced to play out of position a lot. Um, but, you know, in terms of just playing in the NEPSAC and playing in the ISL, you know, there's a lot of guys that, you know, in a couple of years, you might turn on the TV and see them playing in the NCAA tournament. And that's that's kind of how I use it to describe to other people, you know, what it's like. Like, those are the caliber of guys that, you know, you have to go up against. And, you know, you every night, you know, you have to just give it your all because even on a night where you're not playing maybe the top team in the ISL, you know, they're still damn good. Yeah. And they still got, you know, big guys, fast guys, strong guys who can play the game and know how to play and are coached well. So the ISL is tough and the NEPSAC is, they're very tough, very tough. Yeah, so no days off pretty much is what you're trying yeah, to say. No days off. No, <laughs> days off. <laughs> no, no games off. off. <laughs> you know, you're going to have to guard someone. It's not going to be a lot of fun or easy to like, guard. And that's oh, yeah, gonna... you definitely got to grind a lot, you know, even – even like practices, you, you can't take practices off because, you know, you know that that next game is going to be grueling regardless. And, you know, people, not, not in a disrespectful way, but people are, they're trying, they're trying to win. And I mean, everybody wants to win, but like, it's a different type of like mentality, like win at all costs, I feel like. Yeah. And so you have to really go out there and have your best or else it could get ugly fast. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. That's 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 got to be tough, and like to go through that grind. But that also probably makes you a better player as well, too. Um, I want you to, you know, can you explain to the listeners of like what your season was like up here? Because we Rhode Island was able to get a season, but I know it's a little different for Nepsack because they play. Um, you know, they had to stay in state. So, like for the St. Andrews, St. George's school, they played against uh, the Interscholastic League, the Rhode Island Interscholastic League here. Um, what was it like for you guys? Did you guys have a season? Or are you guys going to have a season? Like, how's it going to work out for you guys? Yeah. So essentially, I think what happened in the ISO was there's a group of teams, um, about eight or 10, I want to say, I don't know the exact number, but there was a group of teams, a group of schools, I should say, that came together and were like, okay, here are the parameters. Um, you know, we are going to do what we can to have these games, but we have to follow these parameters. Um, so once the season started, you know, we started testing, our school started testing everyone really weekly on a weekly basis, whereas coming in in the fall, it was just kind of like when we came back from breaks, 
we would get tested. So like um, after Thanksgiving break, we got tested, so on and so forth. Um, however, um, so they came together and they said weekly testing. And, you know, if you come back negative, you can play a game with masks. Um, so that was pretty much kind of the overarching ISL rules. Um, however, at BBNN, we, it, we had it tough, or I feel like we had it tougher than most teams. I mean, like our half of our school um, was schooling in our athletic center. So we didn't have a, we didn't have a home game one. Two, we didn't get a chance to practice in a real gym. Um, we had to kind of, we practiced. So we have like a field house that like has, that's where the hockey rink and the tennis courts are hosed, are housed. So um, we had to practice in like that field house area with um, the surface was a tennis court surface. So it's like you were, we were practicing on like an outdoor, like blacktop ish surface um, with like hoops, with um like backdoor hoop yeah not backdoor backyard hoops yeah um so that's essentially what our practice situation was so on top of the whole covid thing you know for us since we didn't have we don't have the space that some of the other isl schools have you know half of our school was schooling in our athletic center so we didn't have a gym available to us for practice or for game um we had to practice in a tennis court um so it was just different um in terms of that switch from that switch from what we were practicing on to, you know, when we would go to other schools, yeah. um, what we were playing on, it was just different because the width wasn't the same. The length wasn't the same. The hoops weren't the same. So it was just a lot of, you know, switching on the fly, you know, constantly week in, week out. Um, so yeah, we just had to, we just had to grind it out. But in terms of whether we, we had, yes, we had a season. Um, it was a significantly shortened season um however i think you know something is better than nothing yeah yeah and, uh, yeah yeah honestly yeah something's better than nothing like i think it's and it it kind of stinks i mean you know you are in your your senior year it stinks that like you can't have a full-length season and like everything like that but at, at least you could at least you're not the only one going through it it's just not you guys so i mean i guess that's the best part about it. do you have like a favorite game or anything from this past season favorite game from this past season um i'd say my favorite game would probably be our last one i think we played our quote unquote senior night game um we had to play it at belmont hill cuz we didn't have a um a home court available to us but we were playing against pingaree actually um and although we lost it was on senior night you know i think we really it really kind of brought together everything that we've been working on the whole season you know we had a lot of injuries this season um on top of you know covid not having our normal court whatever whatever we had a lot of injuries so it really wasn't a our best season a great season um but i think the guys battle hard. Um, and I think in that game, you know, although we lost a close one, um, that was, that would probably be my favorite game, even though it hate, I hate my senior night to be, you know, on somebody else's court, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it was, we, they did the best with what we could do, um, with what we were given. So I think that was probably my favorite game. Our last one against finger. That's great. That's great. I mean, uh, I mean, is there something that too, that like you, um, like any adversity that you learn from like the season or like anything that you take from the season that you're going to take with you through maybe the rest of your life, like maybe even stories to share of like about this. So like, what do, what do you think? No. Yeah. I'd probably just say like, don't hmm, advice from this season. Probably just say, I don't know, just give it, give it everything you got and don't take anything for granted you know, this season, you know, come coming off of last season, um, before COVID hit and everything shut down, I think everybody, the consensus amongst the non-seniors um, was that, oh, we're going to have a really good season next year. Like, we're going to be, we're going to build upon with what we started. Um, and, you know, all of that obviously was kind of thrown, thrown away with, you know, COVID being this year long plus. Uh, pandemic that has really, you know, put a kind of shut down everything for a while. 
and we're still, you know, recovering from it now. Um, but don't take anything for granted. And, you know, when you have your chance, um, give it everything you got. Um, don't leave anything out there because, you know, even now with the season being over, I look back on plays or certain games and being like, damn, like, I don't know if I really gave it everything I had. And it's crazy because like, I think that like, regardless, because even when I was in the season, I kept telling myself like, you know, this is like your last couple of games, like every game could be the last game um, in terms of, you know, if we have one positive test, we're shut down for who knows how long. So every game, you know, was an opportunity um, that was not given. And, you know, you just had the, it was a blessing really to be able to play at all. So, you know, don't take anything for granted would be something that I really um, would say is the mantra, I guess, for this season. Don't take anything for granted and give it all you got when you when you get the chance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I fully agree. That's a that's a great one. I think a great advice to pass along. Like you said, you just don't know and don't take it for granted. And it could be your last, like you said, you're playing in a game. You said it could be like your last game. You have no yeah. idea. Um, do you have a favorite game overall from like playing at BBN or something like that that really sticks out to you the most? Oh, um, I'm gonna have to go back to my junior year. There's a couple of them. We had a really good junior se- uh, junior season, um, even though we had a lot of chaos in terms of we had a coaching switch, um, a coaching change at the beginning of our junior year, two games in. So there was a lot of chaos and kind of a changing of kind of the whole program in what I th- what I saw was um, a positive direction. Um, but a couple would be. Uh, home against Belmont Hill. Um, my sophomore year, I didn't play, um, but we lost badly to Belmont Hill at, on their court. So our junior year, it was kind of like we did lose at home, but it was like a very close game, um, you know, and it just felt like it was it was kind of the changing of the tide, if you will, kind of in the sense that like, oh, like, in terms of BBNN as a school and as a basketball program, because we're a very good football school. Um, but in terms of the basketball program specifically, that hasn't been that good over the years. It's like, oh, like good things are definitely on the way. Like we're going to be we're going to be on the rise and put a lot of people on notice soon in terms of this program. Um, so that game was a really um, intense one. Overtime loss on senior night, my junior year to Nobles at home. Um, that game was just crazy back and forth. Um, over time, you know, we, <laughs> we just, we just didn't have, we just didn't have what it took when it got to overtime, we were tired. Um, but we played a really good game. And then our last game of the season, a win against Lawrence Academy, who we haven't beaten in, oh my God, I don't know how long. Um, <laughs> it, it's been a long time, at least 10 years. Um, since we beat Lawrence Academy so we beat them at home for to end the season that was really nice um, you know a double a school yeah. um, a team that kind of nobody expected us to be and you know we just kind of like this our last game this year we kind of just put everything uh, that our new coach was trying to get us to you know mold into you know his system which was very different um, than our former coach's system you know we just put it all together and you know we came out with the victory over a a very formidable and very, very good ISL opponent. So, yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's great. That's those sounds like some fun games that like be a part of, especially, you know, uh, pre COVID times with the junior year and everything like that. That's awesome. And then beating Lawrence oh, yeah. Academy, which is great. It gotta be great if you haven't beaten them in such a long time. So oh, yeah, it, it'd been a long time since we beat them. So it felt really good. That's awesome. That's, that's so cool. And then uh, as you get ready for the next level to play, is there something that you're getting like that you want to work on the most during the off season? Off season. Um, I'd probably say I've done a lot of strength training lately. Um, In terms of this past season, I feel like I didn't play my best. Um, And, you know, I could chalk it up to a lot of things, but I expect a lot out of myself and I'm, probably my harshest critic you know I after every game I watched you know I watched the whole game over again um and just like really picked apart my game and I feel like had I been a little bit more physically prepared um I could have been more effective 
Um, in terms of things that I always want to work on, though, like just in general on um, ball handling, um, you know, especially since I'll be switching into um, more of that guard ball dominant position as I go to the next level. I think that um, my ball handling definitely needs to get better. Not that it's, you know, bad or anything, but yeah. it, it can always get better. That's something that can always get better. Yeah. And then shooting um, as well. Um, you know, I've always been kind of, I'd say a streaky shooter. Um, and I'm just working on consistency and, you know, just it's a lot of shootings, a lot of technique. Um, so, you know, just working on that technique and getting it down, getting my form down and just making sure that, you know, I do the same thing every time. And the only way I can do that is through repetition. So those two things are probably going to be the biggest things, um, you know, that I work on this summer ball handling and um, shooting, but also my conditioning. I, I consider myself to be someone who's in pretty good condition. Um, and with the masks, it was difficult. I'm not going to lie. Even yeah. though I was like, I was training, like running um, with a mask on, it was still like, I don't know why, but it was still like very hard to play yeah. at yeah. top speed with the mask on. Um, so, you know, I don't know what, you know, my next season will look like, whether it's mask, no mask or what it will be. However, you know, conditioning is something that I'll probably emphasize a lot this season as well. That's awesome. That's great. And very excited for uh, what comes next your way and everything that works out well for you. Um, and then I want to ask too, before I get into some fun, fun questions to ask you, what was it like to compete in a shot for life as well? Shot for life. It was a lot of fun. Um, you know, although COVID um, kind of changed the whole formatting of it, um you know playing in asfl um was a lot of fun i think that you know i made some bonds with kids that i didn't know that i still talk to today um you know rekindled some bonds with um some former coaches um that were there and i just had a lot of fun you know it's it's a great cause and you know anytime that i feel like anyone gets the chance to you know play the game they love or do what they love to do and have it impact so many more people, especially so many more people that can't do that thing. Um, you know, I think it's a great cause. I think Mike, you know, slow, he does a great job of, you know, kind of running it. And this year, especially, I know they went through some hard times and, um, you know, with COVID and there was a point in time where they didn't think they were going to be able to have the event. So, um, you know, I think shout out to him and his, um, staff for really getting it together and it, I had a great time so yeah that's awesome that's great all right I want to get some fun questions and uh, I definitely want to ask you so my one of my questions I always ask everyone is do you have any a superstitions pre-game superstitions or pre-game like uh, rituals that you have to do um no not really this is surprising because you know I don't know I'm I feel like the type of person I am, I probably would have one, but I really don't. I just kind of, you know, I listen to music every game, but it's not like I listen to the same song or the same artist or anything like that. Like, it's just like, you know, whatever I'm feeling that day, you know, I'll just plug in that, put in the headphones and, you know, just go. But um, yeah, I don't really have any crazy superstitions or even small ones, really. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's fine. What kind of music do you like uh, or listen to? Um, I listen to a lot of rap. Um, I kind of, one of the things that I want to expand upon is the music that I listen to. Cause I'm, I'm very like, very like rap and hip hop focused. So like, that's, I guess that's one thing that outside of basketball, you could say that I'll, I'll work on this summer is trying to expand my musical palette. <laughs> I like um, that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> expand my musical palette a little bit, but yeah. That's awesome. Is there, do you have like a favorite rapper or a favorite song now? Um, my favorite rapper is Polo G. Um, I don't know if you know who that is, but he's out of Chicago. And yeah, I don't know. I just really like his message, his flow. Um, you make me feel yeah. old when you say, you know, if you don't know. That. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just know like some people, like if a teacher were to ask me, they'd be like, who's that? Like, yeah. I don't know, you know, they're, I don't know. They like, I feel like my teachers are like, Pat, like more, New, any newer than like little Wayne and like Drake and they, they just like don't know who it is um <laughs> that's, but, me. that's definitely me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Polo G is definitely my favorite rapper um so yeah that's awesome that's great and uh what do you think about the Boston Celtics I know we talked about 
them or, or do you think they need to make a yeah, trade? They're, they're, they're hurting right now. And I don't, I really don't, like, I've been thinking about it a lot. Me and my friends have had a lot of conversations about, like, what they need. And I don't know, like this year, I really thought it was the year. And I mean, like a Boston fan always thinks it's the year. So like, that's yeah. not saying too much, but this year I really thought it was the, year. you know, um, the bubble season, I thought we should have made the finals. Um, uh, the, I mean, shout out to the Miami heat. They played a good series. Um, but I really thought we were a better team than them. I thought we definitely should have made the finals. Um, and I thought we would have been a better challenger, honestly, to the Los Angeles Lakers. I know nobody's really well now I guess you could say in the nets but in the bubble nobody was really a, a formidable opponent for you know LeBron and AD two of the top five in the league on the same team but I think we could have played them better um in terms of right now um I think I think it's like a lack of chemistry and I don't know why really because like our key pieces have like been together for um a decent amount of time like enough to create good chemistry that we shouldn't be like eighth. I think I saw, I checked last night and we were like eighth in the East. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I really consider us to be, you know, top three, top four, you know, a top three, top four team in the East and, you know, a top, definitely a top 10 team in the league. Um, but we're just not playing like it right now. And I don't know, you know, this is, this is really not a good time to be, you know, having, these struggles in terms of, you know, we're after the all-star break, you know, we have um, the playoffs are coming up. So we'll see what happens. And I really hope they rise to the occasion. Um, but I think, you know, we just picked up before I hopped on here. Um, we, I saw that we were uh, finalizing with Fournier uh, from the, who do you remember? Oh, the magic. The magic. Um, yeah. So that'll add some, you know, some shooting, some outside shooting, which is something that I feel like we've always needed um somebody who can consistently you know knock down an outside shot um kind of take the scoring load off of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown because I feel like Kemba's really wishy-washy and I know he like even though they say he's healthy like his knee is his knee is shot like if yeah. we're being honest his knee is shot um so like we need somebody else that can you know put in you know that 15 to 20 um when we need it because we can't we can't just drop the load on you know Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum I mean they're great players I love watching them play and they're young which is the best thing about you know them like they're the sky's the limit for them you know I don't see I don't see them falling off for a long time and I see them getting a lot better um but you know with them being young comes you know them being young and they don't know everything yeah um so you kind of have to take the good with the bad with them and you know we'll see what happens but to be honest i don't i don't really have a good answer for what we need or, i don't either uh, i don't yeah, i have, I have no either. answer for it like you said yeah, why we're struggling i think i mean this was a good pickup we'll see what happened i'm glad one thing i'm glad about is that um i heard a lot of talks and i mean trade the trade deadline hasn't hit yet so i don't want to say anything and then it happens but i really I heard a lot of talks about um, us trying to give away smart. And I really don't think that's what we need. I think that's the opposite. Um, I'm high on Marcus smart yeah. um, because like the way he plays defense and like, he's just like a blue collar guy. And that's kind of been like the Boston MO, especially for the Celtics, like blue collar guys that play hard, you know, um, don't take plays off. And I mean, with him, like he's such a good defender that, yeah, sometimes he makes bad decisions, you know, off, offensively and people don't like that and think that's like why he needs to go but I think with him you got to take the good with the bad because I really see him as like one of the best perimeter defenders in the league without a doubt so I think yeah we don't need to shop him that's one thing I think we don't need to do so yeah yeah I think uh smart has bailed him out so many times and like he has made so many big plays especially in the bubble if you watch the play some of those playoffs games he's done so many great things for them I don't think I would think it'd be unnecessary to trade him I think they do need help like I think they need a guy like smart like like bring back I think I, I brought up in another pocket like Kendrick Perkins is like they need some like that center that's just like uh, a strong center same tenacity as like smart they don't need to score a lot just get your rebounds and kind of play that hard nose defense I think is what they're missing no yeah definitely yeah. definitely that inside presence we've been lacking it and uh Robert Williams played really well in the bubble um, yeah I think he needs to see more time I'm not gonna lie. I haven't watched a lot of the Celtics recently, yeah. but um, I watched last night and um, 
I didn't, I didn't see the comeback coming. I honestly turned off the TV after we went down. <laughs> I did so too. Like, yeah. If I'm being honest, I just turned it off. Cause like, I just like, I'm going to support them to the end, but sometimes it's just, it's just too unbearable to yeah, watch. Yeah. yeah. I'm right um, there, right? <laughs> I think, I think that we do need that inside presence. I definitely agree. Cause, um, you know, we, we need somebody to grab boards and in the bubble, Adebayo was really killing us. Adebayo like, looked like a Yeah, he awesome was, he was, <laughs> he was really killing us. And, you know, not to say that he's not a good player because he's, he's a great player yeah. um, and he's going to get a lot better too. Um, but he was just really killing us to the point where it was like, it was like bad. And I was like, I don't even know where to go from here. Cause yeah, it, it was bad. He was making us look bad for sure. But yeah. So, yeah. So actually Aaron Gordon just got traded to Denver. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I heard a lot of talks. Yeah, I, sure that. Just... I, I, I wasn't really a fan of him coming here. Not that we don't need him, but like I just didn't see necessarily what he could bring to the team that we didn't like already have in someone else. Yeah, that's so, that's that's what I thought too. So yeah, I wasn't I wasn't really high on that trade happening or us signing him or whatever. No, I thought it would have been nice for like rebound aspects, but I don't know. I think there's like you can get Drummond and you can get. Aldridge, who's also out there, I think that they could get, like, I just think they need one more solid big, and I think, like you mentioned, Fourierner is a pretty good, a good pickup as well, too, so I was, no, I was yeah. sure, and then you, you talked me into it, to be honest with you. No, yeah, <laughs> I, I think he'll, he'll add some depth at that wing position, you know, somebody that can get their own shot, that doesn't need to be, you know, set up, Yeah. Um, and we definitely need more of that, because we even sometimes when we get stops we just can't score the basketball and it's yeah. just like like you can't get stops forever like even if you're playing you know like a subpar nba team you know they're still pros like they they're still eventually going to put the ball in the hoop so yeah. we got to um yeah find some more scoring definitely nice nice um yeah I, I fully agree all right i got two more questions and then we'll um we'll wrap it up one thing uh what do you what are your plans to uh, major in college um college so biz, i want to go in the business direction um some of the school well specifically sports management you know i'm a sports guy through and through and i definitely think that you know my occupation later down the road and my profession is going to be um in sports you know whether it's um you know an agent or you know representing players or the team side or you know a goal of mine is much later down the road is to own a franchise so I definitely want to um, be in sports and be involved in sports later down the road. But in terms of in college, um, I'm going to major probably in either business um, or for the schools that don't have it, like economics or finance. Um, you know, it, advice that my mom always gave me um, that she got from someone else who was a professor was, you know, you can always go deeper like later in your college career but you can't you can't expand like there's not a lot of jobs coming out of college for like if i were to major in sports management there wouldn't be necessarily that's not a large field kind of so like the what the broader your um your major is um kind of that's what I've go, i was going for the broader it is you know you can always get more specific and you know target the jobs that you want but, um, you know, if they're not there and you're that too specific, then it can come back to hurt you. So, yeah, business, economics, finance, that realm. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. I think that's a great, great path. And I love that you have the goal to eventually own a franchise. Just remember me. And then uh, I want to ask you, what's your favorite food? Favorite food? Um, I'm a big uh, pasta person. Like, I love pasta um you know anything pasta really you know whether it's you know spaghetti or chicken alfredo you know anything i'm just i'm a big pasta person so really if it has pasta in it there's there's a good chance i'll like it so yeah that's awesome do you have a favorite restaurant um i don't think i do um yeah i don't think i do it's too many options in pasta. yeah too many too many italian options <laughs> yeah too many options and then uh last question favorite thing uh, to do outside uh, basketball. I know you want to expand your music palette outside of basketball, but <laughs> yeah. what's, your, what's your favorite thing to do outside of basketball? Um, favorite thing to do outside of basketball. Well, one of them is obviously, you know, I love to hang out with my friends. Um, but um, one thing that I do that's not basketball is I actually play um, viola in the school orchestra. And I've been playing music 
for as long as I've been playing basketball. So what's that? Being close to close to it's it's around 13, 14 years that I've been playing wow. my musical instrument. Um, and you know, that goes to, you know, my mom's concept of balance. If you don't have one thing, you can't have the other. So yeah. it's been a battle that, you know, I wanted to start it originally um when I was younger. Um, and then I've I've grown out of it a little bit, but I still enjoy it here and there. And I still play in the orchestra, um, you know, this year. So that's one thing that people don't, that might not, that don't know me definitely won't guess or won't know um, that I've been playing a musical instrument. Yeah. For 13, 14 years and I'm in the BBN orchestra. So, yeah. That's awesome. That's great. Well, Alex, this has been a lot of fun, man. I, I, I Great to have you on the show. It's awesome to learn about you and about basketball up in Boston and what you're doing. And I'm very excited for your career. I watched your highlights, man. You're, you're a great on-ball defender. You get to your spots and you play great basketball. So very excited to see where your future takes you and what schools you end up deciding to go to. And I, I wish you the best of luck. Got to have you back on the show down, again down the line. We have to maybe talk some more Celtics or maybe Definitely. talk some more talk some Patriots or something like that or definitely, whatever. Definitely. Whatever. I'm down to come on anytime. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, but thank you so much for your time. Do you have any statements, questions or anything before me, before you sign off? Uh, no, thank you for having me once again. And um, yeah, thank you. That's all I got. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much.